Ladies, gentlemen, and you beautiful in-betweens, hello and welcome to X4 Foundations. I'm Computer, and I've always loved the X series. It's a bit of a weird one, though, as not a lot of games let you start off in a small fighter or freighter and end up building a galaxy-spanning empire while letting you keep flying a fighter if you want to. Also, the empire you build can be either one of conquest or industry. Or exploration, I believe they also had it in this game. It's entirely up to you. It's a sandbox, is what I'm trying to say. As for what we're working with right now, there are two expansions or DLCs, Split Vendetta and Cradle of Humanity. And on the way is also a new expansion called Tides of Avarice, which is set to launch sometime soon. There's no firm date yet, other than the first quarter of 2022, which is about now. With that on the way, I felt it was a good time to jump headfirst into this massive game. So without further ado, hopefully, let's jump into a new game. Alright, so there's some further ado. Let's not hear your words yet. We can go through flight school, combat scenario, advanced gameplay, or go through the main game in the young gun setting out to everything that has struck over the last few decades the terran conflict the xenon and the jump gates shut down the argon federation has established itself as a key power in this new jump gate network and even its most distant colony black hole sun is a hub of trade and community opportunities are a plenty for all Every day, scores of young pilots set out from the system for the first time, on their way to find adventure among the stars. Right. Now, there are, like, this universe has a story to it, lore, if you will. And I've played through X3, Reunion, uh, Terran Conflict, and Albion Prelude. I have more time in Prelude than any other game. I bounced off X Rebirth hard though, like really hard, because you couldn't actually fly any other ship than the one you were given at the beginning. You could upgrade that ship a lot though, but uh, yeah, it um, a bit of an anomaly in the X series itself. So there are bits like X Rebirth had a lot more story to it than the other games and since i haven't played it i'm kind of missing out on the story a little bit i feel we can also go at the front line of the paranid dark times for centuries the paranid lived in peace strength between us was a relic of the past so dependent are we on the pontifex that when the jump gates shut down and the pontifex could not contact us chaos ensued life fell into ruin we search desperately for guidance, some even going as far to birth new leaders, each with their own perspective, each with their own ambitions. When the jump gates realigned, it could only end in conflict. Each Pontifex believed they were in the right, each unwilling to back down. Civil war was simply a matter of time. That seems like it has a lot more story to it. Which might be interesting. The untested explorer. Are you the also going to shut down? Is yes, you are. Defined as the single most important event in the history of the network, a disaster of cataclysmic proportion that changed everything, redefining our very way of life. Despite all of the odds, however, we have come through the other side, and along the way, have found more to research and explore than ever before. That is the area in which we pride ourselves: the Alliance of the Word. Founded on the idea that those disconnected from the jump gate network could be saved, we strive to find out more for the good of all of us. Whew, I thought that thing was going to hit. Wow. Also, cool shot, honestly. Now, then we have the DLCs. I'm not entirely sure how stories here work. If by going with the young gun, I don't get to choose, like, I can't play through any of these scenarios. Also, we have a custom game editor or custom game editor, creative or budgeted. Station design simulator, because you can build stations like these 
in the game, which is cool. Heck, I mean, X3 even had a stock market in it, which was pre a pretty easy way to get money, honestly. A lot easier than in the real stock market, at any rate. But I think let's start with the flight school. Time and waiting for shuttles. Want to fly wherever you want, whenever you want? Then what you need is a pilot's license. And what's the best place to get one? That's right, Jace Winger's Flight School. I do theory, I do practice, and I'm licensed for weapons training. With my tried and tested training course, you'll be an ace pilot in no time, guaranteed. Success not guaranteed. No liability in case of explosion, blunt trauma, exsanguination, asphyxiation, or rapid decompression. It would have been suspicious if he didn't add those things in the end there. But yes, uh, guaranteed, not guaranteed. Let's go. Mm. Well, this is taking a little bit of a time. The universe is full of magical things, patiently waiting for our wits to grow sharper. Eden someone? Oh, I should have read that first. This is a help box. Thank you for telling me. Thanks for the introduction. It stays on screen until you close it. Others uh, may disappear after a certain time or after performing a specific action. Press escape to close this one. Uh, do you want to load a pre-made input profile? I think not. Also, you should probably tell me what that is, but fine. The message ticket at the bottom left corner of the screen. If you have an active mission like now, your current objective will be shown there in orange text. Pay attention to me. I am. Thank you. Oh, I'm ah. Jace Winger, your Pay attention to Jace. Today. We'll be running through the full lesson plan, but if you're already familiar with some of the basics, you can talk to me about skipping ahead. Before we begin, I need to perform a few routine physical tests. Regular sure, you know. fine. Please move your head as far up or down as you can. Uh, do you want to invert the vertical? No. Okay, now please walk a few steps. Okay, now do a few jumping jacks, please. Finally, a few squats, please. Hold, see the crouch, release the stand back up. Right, you seem to be in good physical shape, so we can Thank move you. on to your flying you too. lessons. Let me know how you want to proceed. Uh, you interact with F or left button. Then. Yes. Right, hello. Click on a dialog option or press its number on the keyboard. Right, continue with basic flight. Skip to travel, skip to shooting, skip to spacesuit, skip to docking. Never mind. Um, basic flight. We'll start by using the transporter room outside to go to the docking bay. Also, I kind of want to look around here. All right, so we have holographic technology. Nice. Then why do you still use... Never mind. And... If memory serves, you can hack some computers every once in a while on stations. But, uh, oh well. I think red means closed. Yes. Hello. F. Sure. Uh, select your ship, Quasar Vanguard. Uh, to confirm with uh, enter. Or we can just go travel to. Sure. Ah, hello. We can run, that's nice. Oh, hold on, what? What's with that? What? 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 Um... I'm guessing you want me to go in here, but that was... Yeah, sit down on your sh Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, sure. You have cleared for Hello. Proceed. Or shift D to undock, that's good to know as well. All right. Yeah, you can still also use like a gamepad or an actual joystick if you want. But uh, walking around on the actual station with a joystick is a little bit cumbersome. I'm gonna, for now, use a mouse and keyboard. Also, yes, your chip now stairs. I've been doing it for a while now. Thank you. Uh, no. I don't want to use inverted. 
shift space again to turn off mouse steering. You can also hold left mouse button to enable mouse steering until you release it. That's good, thank you. Yes, fine, let's do that until you stop complaining. You can also use the keyboard's uh, arrows to steer your ship. That feels weird. Shift N to turn on direct mouse steering. Shift N. Oh, wow. So now it's like a... The, okay. Hold on. Um, anytime I move my mouse, this is what happens. Or we can go with shift space and this happens. Where it will just perpetually keep moving. That's nice that it gives you an option to do that. And this is also a lot easier for things like aiming, I think. Maybe. Could be wrong, though. Also... Come on. Move on to the next one, please. Or do I press... Escape? No, I do not. Um... Yeah, we can move on. Steer in all directions. Oh, uh, I haven't stepped steered down or up yet. Thank you. Uh, also, wait. Uh, hold on. No, that's not inverted, so never mind. Your ship automatically rolls to stay aligned with the uh, ecliptic. Now, use the strafing controls to move sideways or vertically. I'm not going to do that yet. This, and it turns back. You can turn that off. Which I'm probably going to do at some point. Strafe in all directions. Okay. Before we continue, make sure there's no obstacle right in front of you. I can't <laughs> shoot from here, so I have to trust you on this one. I think. Gently accelerate forwards. Press use the mouse wheel. Okay, cool. Good. Yeah, I can use that. Nice. It's usually a speed limit inside docking areas, but you don't have to worry about exceeding it. The ship's computer. Ah, uh, good. Yes, I don't want a ticket. Try this now. Or we can use backspace to come to a stop. Well and good, but sometimes it can be useful to get a more direct look at things. First, look around your cockpit. There are many different kinds, but ship cockpits often provide a wide field of view outside the ship. You can also look at your ship from the outside with the magic of camera drones. F2. Fly around a bit to get a feel for how it behaves. Alright. Can I change? I cannot change the view here. You can also cycle into a different external camera mode. Try the camera controls now. Oh, wow. Hey, this design is cool. I like this ship. It can stay. Also... That's rather pornographic. Uh, numpad to look around, numpad plus and numpad sub to zoom in and out. This also works on targets within range. For now, return to the normal cockpit view to move on. You can even tell a camera Whoa. drone to stay in a fixed location. Try this now. The controls here behave a little differently. Play around with them now. Return yeah, to that, move on. that's weird. I mean, it works, but it's weird. Because the controls are, like, based on where you're looking. And I can... Oh, I can zoom in. Cool. That's weird. Why does it go all the way in? Like, that doesn't make sense. Hold on. Um, can I... That's you. That's you. I can use you to look around. All right. Um, not the most high detail backgrounds, maybe. Uh, no, that's you. There you go. And then. Yeah. Um, like, I'd like to stop around here, maybe. But if I release the numpad plus right now, this happens. So, bit weird, bit weird. Go back like here. To see what's in front of you with fewer obstructions, you can even make the cockpit practically invisible to you. Is there anything camera drones can't do? Try it now. Ooh, okay. 
X-Wing, hello. Tomorrow control. Hold on, if control H does that, does shift A's... Oh, nice. I like that. All right, sure. Um, now I need to go there. Thank you. I didn't ask, but thank you. Your ship also has a boost function. All right, sure, we can boost. I did. I did. That's nice. But I bet I probably am anyway. Hello. I missed. I think. A remote location for you to fly to. Don't worry, I don't expect you to crawl there at your base speed. That's nice. First, please align your ship so it points roughly towards the target. Now, activate travel mode. Depending on your engine type, it may take a little time to get started. Right. Oh, well. Speed bar just below the crosshairs. You will yeah. Be accelerating for a while until you or shift one, good. Travel speed. You've probably noticed other modes in the list when you activated this one. Each mode has its special use, and only one mode can be active at a time. Yeah, let's look at that actually. That too early. Yes. Let's start again. Travel mode, scan mode, long range scan mode. There you are, thank you. We are moving. Good, good, good. And all right, this is like the quest we have right now, the mission. I wonder if there's a limit to how fast you can go. Probably like the speed of light, maybe, but um, certainly it would be, but um, yeah. Feels like maybe it's slowing down. Like the acceleration is slowing down, rather. That's a weird way of saying it. Shift one. Which means a few things. First, your ship is decelerating much more slowly than it normally would. Second, steering is easy again. Give it a try now. Third, you've probably noticed that your ship keeps flying in the same direction. I have, yes. Have to a stop much more quickly by actively decelerating. This automatically re-engages the safety limits on steering. As for the travel direction, any strafe movement will revert that to the behavior you're used to. You can also drop out of travel mode more quickly, skipping the coasting phase. Let's try this now. Please reactivate travel mode. Got it. Now wait until you build up some speed. Uh -oh. ready, quickly drop out of travel mode. Um just by doing that? Pressing backspace? Yes. Part will take place some distance from here, so let's take a break and let the autopilot do the hard work for now. Menu, autopilot, or shift A. Okay. Automatically navigates to the current objective. It engages travel mode when appropriate and makes use of gates, accelerators, and highways. It even avoids obstacles in the way. Uh, well, mostly, which is why you still need to be at the controls. You may notice that it sometimes turns travel mode off when everything seems wide open to you. The safeties are on a bit of a hair trigger, probably to keep insurance rates from skyrocketing. While we wait, let's check out your logbook. 
Sure thing. There are several menus you can access this way. Open the one that's highlighted now. In a second, in a second. Tutorial and help. Oh, that would be... Oh, and I can use control left and right to not have to use the mouse here. Here you have access to details about your current status and statistics. The logbook is highlighted. Open it now. Sure. As you can see, there are several categories. You can select one to filter the entries or look at all of them at once. Most of the tips you've seen up until now have been added to the logbook. You can always go back and reread them if you feel like you've missed or forgotten something. Take your time looking around these menus. Close them when you're ready to move on. Or when I've arrived. The thing here is, these do not show up here. So that one that I missed, that just flashed on and off, does not show up. Like, there's no... Press escape to close menus. No. Uh, tips, though, they're good, I suppose. I have a lot of them. And well, hold on. Hold C to crouch, release it. Yeah, that's one of those. Give me a second. I shift N to turn direct mouse steering. Oh, we're stopped. Good. Select undock. Sit down. Oh, so that's the one I missed. Yeah. Sit down on your chair. Pilot disengaged. Good. I hope we're also, also stopped. Press W twice to run. I know about that one. Sit down on your chair and click it uh, or press F to interact and that just popped up and then was gone. Good, you've arrived. There's a ship next to you. Its color on your HUD indicates that it's not hostile. Please select Shift X. target. Match speed with your target. By oh, way, it, uh, you have to press it every time. It's even possible when both you and your target are in travel mode. Unless I hold... Oh, wow. Activated your primary weapon. The small dots that have just appeared indicate where the weapons are currently aiming. They will automatically track your current target as long as it's close enough. There are a handful of targets in front of you. Their HUD color indicates that they are enemies. Note sure. The markers of some targets are smaller. These targets are currently outside your weapon range. Ah. Select the thing in the middle. Closest enemy target. A new HUD element has appeared right in the center of the target. This is the aim ahead indicator. It shows you where you need to aim, which is especially useful if the target is moving. Slowly cycle through all the targets. Cargo drop. When a target outside your weapon range has been selected, you can see the weapon indicators becoming darkened. The aim ahead indicator also changes its appearance. Hard. Select the closest enemy target again and shoot at it until it's destroyed. All right, so this little dot here, it turns gray in there now. Cargo. It's hard to see that. Your weapon's just overheated. You will not be able to fire until oh, they've cooled right. to a cool, safe cool, cool. temperature. Alright, why didn't this get destroyed, though? Let's go closer. Uh, yeah, you should be hitting. There we go. Sorry. Right of your crosshair, you'll see bars next to your weapons that gradually fill up when you are firing. This is heat. It automatically dissipates when you stop firing. This happens more slowly if there are multiple weapons cooling down at the same time. That was easier. Cargo drone. Right. Now I think I'm supposed to go get. Uh... This target is much sturdier than the others. Look at the blue bar above the target. This ah, is its shield cool. strength. After a few seconds without damage, it will begin to recharge. All shields work like this, including your own. How many seconds, though? Way too many. 
That's, uh... I'm just gonna not give it a chance to do that. That felt nice. Oh wow, that, that was no, it hit, it hit. Fly right at it to pick it up. And hold. Oh, nope. Not quick enough. Come on. I'm just gonna stop. This is getting silly now. There. There! Finally! It has been automatically added to your ammunition storage. Missile launchers have limited ammunition. You can see the number of remaining missiles to the left of your cross here. Oh, eight. Let's go into more detail about your weapons. Open the ship menu. Here we go. Focus on the highlighted weapon ah. configuration section. Each installed weapon has its own row. The squares in each row show you which weapon groups that weapon is part of. You can assign any weapon to any weapon group. You can also change the ammunition that's loaded into your missile launchers. Try it if you like. Close the menu and move on. So like the buttons on the grid, so basically like MiG-5. Um, you can have secondary. That's you. And I want you to stay secondary. But you can, if you want, just make another normal weapon a secondary cool odd um no no heavy guided should be fine you can quickly cycle through your configured weapon groups please activate each primary group at least once you can also cycle through the available ammunition for any active missile launcher here try this now it takes a little time for the new missile type to be loaded into the launcher this yeah, that works. The weapons tutorial. There's a capital ship nearby. Please approach it. All right. As long as I don't have to shoot at it. And engage. Forty-eight kilometers away. That's a fair bit. And yeah, shift A to autopilot again. All right, information unlocked. Zero percent, command, zero, zero, or question marks. Hull, 100%, shield, 100%, storage, question marks, crew, question marks, Argon Federation, and we're getting close. Please stop. Get as close as possible Thank you. You can get much closer than that. Yes, yes, I can, I think. Oh. Wait, this feels weird. You are now flying relative to the ship thanks to special flight assistance software. This works for most things that are bigger than medium sized ships. No matter what the capital ship does, you will move along with it. This is especially useful for combat as well for docking or undocking. I've set up some targets on the ship's surface. Please destroy them. Try to use the ship's surface as cover. Thank you. Oh, sorry. I mean, I'm supposed to be shooting at you, but still, sorry. That was rude of me. Oh wow. Requesting immediate backup. Uh autonomous distress drone. <laughs> I 
Okay, that was a bit too close, but as you can see, small collisions are no big deal. Yeah, but, well, it's not your ship. But it's an interesting idea to have you be relative to a ship like this. It's just I'm very bad at controlling this. I'm leaving. Please don't mind me. Fly to the next objective. You may use travel mode or the autopilot if you like. Yeah, I think this is a good place to stop for today, I think. Yeah, this we're still just in the tutorial, yes, but uh hold on, what are you? Autonomous distress drone. I hope they don't hate me. But yeah, interesting, um, a little worried that the story won't start off immediately and that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stories to choose from, but uh, that's a decision for another day. And with all of that said and done, ladies, gentlemen, and you beautiful in-betweens, I've been Computer, this has been X4 Foundations, thank you for watching. And I hope to see you next time.